Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue our Basically series. For those of you who are unaware, the Basically series is a series that will require you to just invest only uncommons and commons into these decks. You do not need a single rare or mythic to build these. That's right. So for today's deck tag, we're going to be playing a deck that kind of does a little bit of milling. It's going to do a little bit of aggro and a little bit of tempo in this deck that I am simply calling basically rogues. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Whether you're new to the game or a returning viewer, either way, we have to talk about the stats of the deck before we jump right into it. So as you can see right here, we're rocking a Demir style deck of blue and black. Our average matter curve is about 2.3. That is a little deceptive, but I'll explain a bit later on why is that. We have 20 creatures in the deck, we're running 20 instants and 20 lands. So this deck is looking at two different ways of getting to victory. We're looking at either trying to mill out our opponent with a bunch of our key lands and creatures, or we're going to try to utilize some of those creatures to do some damage to our opponent and protect them with some well-timed counter spells and tempo plays. To do that, let's talk about all the creatures first in the deck. So with that, we're looking at primarily, as you mentioned from the title, obviously it's a rogue style deck, but we have a little bit of an extra creature in here, which we'll talk about right now. That is Ruin Crab. If you've seen some of my other videos, and even if you haven't, this crab is doing a lot of awesome utility for we're literally just kind of just sitting out on the battlefield. It has the landfall ability where every time a land enters the battlefield, each opponent has to mill three cards. This will get the mill going with what we're trying to do. And most often than not, most opponents will see this card and want to try to destroy it on the spot. If they're trying to do that, we also have other one drops that can help us do a little bit of milling and actual extra damage. We have Merfolk Wind Robber here. So whenever it deals damage to a player, that player has to mill a single card. However, we can sacrifice the Wind Robber at any time to draw a card. However, we have to make sure that our opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. Our other creature in the one drop slot is going to be Zulaport Duelist here. This is actually a really sweet little card because when it enters the battlefield, a targeted creature gets minus two, minus zero until end of turn, and we get to mill two cards from our opponent's library. One of our main key offs, however, is in the two drop slot, and we have Soren Thought Thief here. So this Demir Human Rogue is a one three with flash and flying, and it simply reads, as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, rogues you control get plus one plus zero. Whenever one or more rogues you control attack, each opponent mills two cards. Simply put, this card does a lot of awesome stuff for simply a two mana investment. Ideally, try to bring it in, of course, at the end of your opponent's turn, so this way you can do some damage very quickly with a card. In the three drop slot, our only other creature we have left is going to be Nimana Skydancer. This three mana 2-1 human rogue has flash and flying as well, and also when it enters the battlefield, target opponent mills two cards. Ideally, you can use this for some damage if, of course, you have a powered up Soren Thought Thief, but you can also kind of think of this as some pseudo removal if you flash this in and do have it take some combat damage against an opponent. Now, with our rogues out of the way, doing some damage and doing some milling, we're going to need, of course, some key cards to ensure that they have ways to protect themselves and also get rid of pesky creatures that might be in our way that sometimes our rogues just can't deal with. So with that, in the one drop slot, we have the one and only Fatal Push. You've seen this card, of course, many times, and this is what's one of the unique cards that differentiates itself from the previous Blue Mono Blue Tempo deck that we talked about earlier in this series. With Lofty Denial and Drown in the Lock, these are also great counter spells, but if you need something that actually can do some extra damage and destroy a creature that has a high mana value later in the game, Drown the Lock is going to be a really key card, so you may want to consider saving these a little bit later on into the mid or late game. And our final counter spell that we have is Didn't Stay Please. This may look a little expensive for a counter spell at 3 mana. If we can counter the spell, however, we can have our opponent mill 3 cards, so each of these cards will allow us to then help push forward our game plan. However, there's going to be a couple of moments where you might be running a little low on fuel so this is where our final card comes into play into the story the card does look a little expensive at seven but as it does read it of course will be a lot cheaper once we get to the mid part of the game when we absolutely have to refuel our hand now to ensure that our lands come into play untapped we of course want to minimize the dual taps as much as possible to the point where all we really need is obscure a storefront here and the only reason why we have this is this will trigger off ruin crap a couple of extra times when it enters the battlefield sacks itself and helps us dig out another basic land so with one of these out you can then have your ruin crab mill six cards for the only price of playing one land pretty awesome of course otherwise the other islands and swamps are pretty much what you're going to expect just a split down the middle of six swamps six islands if we are close to milling out our opponent the inuit rivulet here will be a great way to round out our land package and with that out of the way, here's mostly going to be the tips I'm going to give you for the deck. This is definitely what is going to be called a draw-go style of deck. What that basically means for those of you who are a little bit newer to such a phrase is you're ideally going to just pass your 
turn a lot and keep your mana open. But why is that? As we saw, of course, when we were talking about select cards, our Namara Sky Dancers, our Soren Thought Thieves, our Zulaport Duelists, they all have flash. So when they do flash themselves in, that means, of course, you can play them at any time you can play an instant. In other words, if your opponent is about to end their turn and say you have your mana open, but you have that Soren Thought Thief and have, you have that Sky Dancer or the Duelist, then you can bring them down, then get your abilities off, and then from there, once your turn passes and you have your upkeep, your creatures are now ready to go to start swinging at them and you already have mana open to protect them in case of your opponent tries to get a little sneaky with you. Ideally, the way you want to play the deck is once you can get those cards out and start out-tempoing your opponent, pushing pressure on them by milling a couple of cards, triggering off Sword and Thought Thieves' ability. With that, keep your mana open for those counter spells to protect them to so ensuring that your opponent basically can't play a game of magic. However, the other tricky part to this deck is there's going to be moments where your opponent also might try to hold up stuff. So this is where you're going to have to sometimes be a little bit aggressive just to get underneath your opponent. In the first turns of the game, if you can get out that Wind Robber or your Ruin Crab since they don't have flash, by all means, get them out ASAP so you can just start accumulating value with each of these cards. Don't be afraid to then sacrifice your Wind Robber if you absolutely have to, just to ensure you can get a little extra card draw out of it in the mid part of the game. And then finally, remember that again, the Into the Story won't really get that cheap discount until you have enough cards milled on your opponent's side of the battlefield. And sometimes you might have opponents that try to use cards that are going to take advantage of the graveyard. So that's one of the biggest weaknesses to the deck that now we can address. If your opponent loves to then use graveyard shenanigans, and since we are playing a best of one deck, you're going to struggle a little bit because they're going to easily get their graveyard filled thanks to what you're basically going to do with your cards. But if you're a fan of this style of gameplay, as always, I will leave, of course, on screen right now, a couple of examples of deck decks that I actually have played with this style in the past. However, those decks actually do have a small investment of rares and mythics. So if you're interested in this style of gameplay, definitely check out those other videos. Of course, they are in my channel. Or if you just want to at least look at the samples of the lists that I have currently on screen right now, be sure to check those out and you'll definitely get a lot of extra value if you are a fan, again, of this style of gameplay. But with that, out of the way here are otherwise my final thoughts I just want to give on the deck. Yes, it is a very fun deck if you like this style of gameplay. Obviously, this is not going to be for everybody. I am not going to lie. I do feel a little dirty, but also I kind of have a little bit of a smirk anytime I can get this deck to go off. I have no soul. <laughs> because it is very fun when it does, but against certain opponents, they're probably going to rage quit faster than you imagine. However, if you are a fan of tempo plays, if you are a fan of milling, if you're a fan of just counterspelling everything your opponent tries to throw at you or just destroying everything while maintaining, of course, control of the board, definitely give this deck a try. And when I assure you, when you manage to pull off those victories and just get underneath your opponent where they just can't do anything against your game plan, you'll have a lot of fun doing so. You may feel a little dirty on along the way, but if you don't mind that, you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!